I'ma crush it. Call me. Hi, I'm Anthony Walker, friend of the city and your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. In this episode, the holidays are in full bloom and we come to you from the skating rink and PPG place near Market Square. Unsung would like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving, though we encourage you to get involved at all times of the year. We know this is a time of the year that many reflect on how they can help those less fortunate. There are many opportunities to make an impact in your community. We start with breaking news from an urgent need from the north side with Unsung special correspondent and local blogger activist Sue Kerr. There's a food pantry on the north side uh, that is part of Northside Common Ministries. It serves over 1,000 families. So that's thousands and thousands of people when you calculate the kids, the significant others, seniors, others that are in those families. It's, in my understanding, it's the largest food pantry in western Pennsylvania, certainly in southwestern Pennsylvania. And last week or so, I found out that they were out of food. The state budget was cut and that put constraints on everyone. So now the food bank has to charge for certain things they weren't charging for before. It's not their fault, but that means the food pantry can buy less food, people are donating less, and it just goes on and on and on. So it, it's, an, it's happening in other pantries. It's just that sort of really struck home because it's so large that they suddenly didn't have any food. People are responding, they're organizing food drives. Uh, we're, our project is looking at how we can help them because with Thanksgiving coming up, yes, it's important that we have food for Thanksgiving, that's great, but we also need to feed people the day after, the day before, lunch that day. I mean, there's, there's real needs that, especially in, as the weather is getting colder, that kick in and affect people's food budget. Despite being the largest food pantry in the county, Jay Poliziani, executive director of NSCM, said that their Northside pantry faces the same issues as many other pantries and food banks across the country who are dealing with a rising demand and a smaller supply of food. Poliziani estimates that two years ago the pantry served about 750 families each month. In 2012, they now serve nearly a thousand families. Federal funding cuts also mean that the NSCM now have to pay for canned and dry food that they had received free of charge from the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank previously, like peanut butter, jelly, and dried box food. Poliziani estimates that the amount needed to cover these new costs could run up to $40,000 each year, and that their supply of dried and canned food is particularly low. We just don't have a financial plan for that, he said, noting that the food bank is not the bad guy, but rather adjusting to their own constraints as well. Lisa Scales, executive director of the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, estimates that there is a 33% increase in households that need assistance. Moving forward, Poluziani hopes that the upcoming holidays will help replenish their supply, but is also interested in engaging new groups to help the organization's need. Our hope is that we can sort of make new connections and reach a younger demographic, said Poliziani. People want to help, but they don't always know how. We invite you to answer the call of the Northside Food Pantry or look for an opportunity in your local neighborhood. Here are a few opportunities that Aung San has heard about. Light of Life Rescue Mission is in need of towels and toilet paper and is also collecting food. If you are able to donate any amount of these items, we would be grateful. Email Ruth Lee at lightoflife.org or call 412-803-4160 for more information. North Hills Community Outreach is collecting Thanksgiving food, $10 grocery cards, toys, and teen gift cards. They are also looking for automobile donations for their community auto program. Please visit nhco.org. South Hills Interfaith Ministries Angel Emporium Program provides holiday gifts to the families they serve. Each year, members of the community donate thousands of new gifts for children and adults. Families come to Angel Emporium together and shop separately. Parents shop for children in one room, while kids pick gifts for their parents in another. Students from local high schools help with wrapping. For more information, please visit the address on your screen. Rainbow Kitchen and Homestead invites you to sponsor a family or individual for the holidays. For more details, go to rainbowkitchen.org. 
You can also keep an eye open for a variety of toy drives and Mikey and Big Bob's stuff a bus. In other news, A Plus Schools delivered its eighth annual report today on academic achievement in the Pittsburgh Public Schools. And Executive Director Carrie Harris said it marked the first time she had delivered so much bad news. The racial achievement gap, which narrowed for the past three years, widened this year, increasing 1.3 percentage points to 31 percent in reading and increased 3.6 percentage points to 30.9 percent in math. The graduation rate decreased from 70 percent to 68.5 percent, and the number of seniors who earned a 2.5 or higher grade point average, the total needed to qualify for Pittsburgh Promise Scholarships, dropped one percentage point to 58 percent for all students. For black students, the number dropped four percentage points to 39 percent. Pittsburgh Superintendent Linda Lane said the news in the report reflected much of what district officials saw in the 2012 PSSA results. We need to go after it and recognize what we need to get done, Ms. Lane said. We rejoined Sue Kerr in a car full of totes to learn about the Pittsburgh Tote Bag Project. I'm Sue Kerr and I'm the founder of the Pittsburgh Tote Bag Project and we're here today in our office. What we do basically is collect tote bags that we then pass on to the food bank and they're distributed to 300 or so pantries in 12 counties. And the reason is that it makes it easier for people to carry groceries. It's about access. It makes it a little more dignified to use the food pantry if you're using the same kinds of bags everybody else is. It reduces their dependency on disposable bags and it frees up money. So every bag that we donate is three or four bags they don't have to buy. And that's money that could be spent on food. So we've been doing this for 19 months and the response has just been incredible. We're all volunteer, our budget is less than $2,000 that we've just raised from donations that people give us literally handing me $5 here, $10 there. And we've collected over 22,000 bags. I'm watching people come out of the building and I see that they have dozens of small orangish, those thin little bags filled with produce and, and distribution is an average of 30 to 40 pounds. They also have paper shopping bags that are great for clothes but not so good for big heads of lettuce and celery and everything. So people are coming out and one gentleman's bag ripped open, a head of cabbage rolled down the hill. It's become an infamous founding story now. <laughs> he went after his head of cabbage because that was several meals. And some folks came out and got him all sewn up with some new bags. And he had even more bags as he left. And it, the thought just came to me because I thought at that time the, food, the, bag, the bags were donated. I didn't realize that they actually were purchased. So it, I thought, well, instead of donating plastic bags, why don't we donate reusable bags? I knew I had a lot of extras at home as my partner often tells me, <laughs> I needed to move them on. So I live tweeted that and unknown to me, um, on the other end of Twitter was um, someone from the Pittsburgh Foundation who was paying attention to what I was writing about and tweeted back that he would send me a couple tote bags the next day or so at work, which he did. And that was how the tote bag project got its start. I guess a couple things that have been the most interesting to me have been who's stepped forward to become a partner. You know, we certainly partner with the hunger organizations and they've been very supportive and that's been great. But the environmental community has really jumped on this. And Pennsylvania Resources Council, Construction Junction, Pittsburgh Center for Creative Reuse, just pretty much everyone in Pittsburgh that's working on some sort of environmental issue has become involved in some, some level. Either they're collecting bags, they're doing a drive, they're promoting it, they're just simply lending their support. The crafting community, we've discovered that we're very crafty. The cloth here for this table is actually made from repurposed tote bags. It's sort of a quilt-like pattern. And these are all bags that were donated that we say needed a new use. So a cra local crafter, Lynn, took them apart and made a table covering for us, which is really nice when we go out to events. So this year for the holidays, we decided to focus on ethnic foods. Pittsburgh is a community that is just built on cultural traditions and a lot of them center around food. So we wanted to, uh, to build on that, I guess, and take a look at what's happening at some of the food pantries where many of the participants are actually refugees and immigrants to Pittsburgh and are using our food pantries as they get their families settled and situated. But they're using the tote bags just in a way that we wish we could learn and because it's just part of their cultural ethics and 
I wanted to do something to give back. So we thought that an ethnic food drive would be an interesting play on the holidays and also raise awareness about the kinds of things that can be donated beyond your typical items that people are familiar with. So we're inviting the public to um, basically collect ethnic foods in tote bags and donate them and then we will pass them on to the food bank so they can get out to families so that everybody can celebrate the holidays with their own ethnic traditions. We're all volunteer, so we certainly need volunteers. And the most important thing you can do for us is organize a tote bag drive. That is responsible for 25% of our donations. It's just like a food drive. It could be done at work, at your faith community, at school, with your youth group. You simply ask people to bring in donations, collect them, call us, we'll pick them up. Volunteering to participate in the project, become a volunteer to tote transport, pick up totes from our donation spots, help us organize, get connections with people, other people who might want to do drives, work on social media, um, and then we need crafters. We need people who are willing to take these tote bags and make new things out of them. And then we can in turn sell those things to raise money for the project. So if you're a crafty person, we can certainly put your skills to good use. Email us at toteforpgh at gmail.com. Our website is www.tote the number four pgh.com we're on facebook tote for pgh also we're on twitter tote for pgh and we're on pinterest tote for pgh hyperlocal call for artist technologists and makers november 27th to december 4th from 4 to 9 p.m if you are a maker artist or technologist who lives in garfield friendship or bloomfield within a 10 block radius of assemble we invite you to submit one work that you have made to assemble second annual hyper local show and art bazaar at assemble 5125 penn avenue opening december 7th this is open to all ages so please drop off your work and assemble between 4 and 9 p.m on november 27th through december 4th with your submission please be sure to include your name address age price and why you like to make things for more information call 412-432-9127 santa is throwing a christmas cartoon fest at the tunesium tunesium will be hosting their first ever holiday cartoon fest starting at 11 a.m on december 1st they will show you all of your holiday favorites as well as a festive sing-along Special guest Ian Petrella, otherwise known as Little Randy from A Christmas Story, will be present from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. A special raffle will take place where you can win a signed Red Rider BB gun signed by Petrella himself. Don't shoot your eye out. Meet Santa Claus and tell him all about your Christmas wishes in the Lou Scheimer Gallery from 12 to 4 p.m. Or make something at the Christmas Craft Station where children can make their very own ornaments, cards, gifts, Christmas buttons, and more. From 4.30 to 5.30 p.m., there will also be storytelling of some of the Tunesium's favorite holiday tales. Admission is $5 per person. Order tickets via Eventbrite at the link on your screen. As always, thanks for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. And as a reminder, our holiday 2012 show is coming and your video can be a part of it. Tell us how you are getting involved and what would make Pittsburgh a better community. Be sure to submit your video to Pittsburgh on Video and join the show. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. Said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car.